Reports from India tonight say as many as 200 people have been killed in Bangladesh in the aftermath of a pre-dawn coup in which President Mujibar Rahman was shot to death in the presidential palace. The Bangladesh Prime Minister and two of his nephews also lost their lives. The newly installed president, Kandakur Mushtaq Ahmed, is thought to be relatively pro-Western. Pro he changed the name of the country from the People's Republic of Bangladesh to the Islamic Republic of Bangladesh. Pakistan recognized the new regime, and here in Washington, the State Department indicated that quick U.S. recognition is likely to. We have more on Bangladesh and Sheikh Mujib from ABC's Lem Tucker. When the people of Bangladesh won their independence from Pakistan in 1971 after a bloody war, their leader, Sheikh Mujibar Rahman, home after months in a Pakistani prison, proclaimed Bangladesh is a reality. But the reality of an independent Bangladesh was probably more devastatingly tragic than before. Still, the 80 million or so people of the country were existing as perhaps the most underfed in the world. Most of them did not have even minimal housing. The country was still periodically ravaged by nature, floods, droughts, and cyclones. And now millions were dead, millions more coming home as refugees with even less than they had before. And the man who was billed as the savior of Bangladesh was Sheikh Rahman, and he knew that. Oh, my people loves me, people have respect me, the people have confidence in me and my party, and I know that so long I am here, my people will help, we will continue their support. But no amount of adulation effectively tackled the country's great economic problem, or ended the corruption in the country, or made the inept bureaucracy effective. And so, for all those reasons, at least according to reports from Bangladesh today, the coup came. So Bangladesh has a new leader, but the nation's problems are the same. Lem Tucker, ABC News. Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, the father of Bangladesh and its only leader since independence, was killed by his bodyguards today in a military coup. The prime minister was killed too. The new president is Kandakar Ahmed, who was against Mujibur's close friendship with Russia and India. He's a conservative lawyer who, with Mujib, was one of the leaders of the war for independence and who is said to want close friendship with the United States. Ahmed renamed the country the Islamic Republic of Bangladesh. There was some rioting after the coup and some 200 of Rahman's followers were killed. A report on why it happened from Edwin Newman. Sheikh Mujib went from public adulation amounting to hysteria to disaster and death in just three and a half years. The ingredients of his downfall were evident even at the beginning. Bangladesh was an international basket case, and not only because of the civil war. There were floods, drought, cyclones, famine, corruption, and poverty, and almost no machinery to deal with them. Sheikh Mujib behaved as heads of state do. He went abroad, visited other heads of state, proclaimed his faith in his country's future. He also equated himself with Bangladesh. When I interviewed him less than a year ago, his replies almost invariably began with the word I. I can do this. I need that. Mujib spent a fifth of his life in prison for the cause of Bangladesh. I asked him whether he thought life had been unfair to him. I don't think so. Because I have suffered for a cause. And uh, in return, I have got love and affection of my people. I'm happy today that my 75 million people emancipated and uh, before that we were a colony. Now Bangladesh is an independent sovereign state. That is my satisfaction. Human being suffers for a cause and I have, suffer I have suffered for a cause. I don't mind it. Love and affection Mujib had, but the hero who takes office must become an effective administrator. Mujib did not, perhaps could not. After a while, he was engulfed by a task too big for him and probably for anybody. Edwin Newman, NBC News.
There is a new pro-American military-backed government in Bangladesh this evening. It took power in a surprise pre-dawn coup. The Bangladesh president, Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, is dead. At least 200 of his leftist followers reportedly were killed in rioting after the announcement of the overthrow. The new rightist regime, which immediately imposed martial law and ordered a 24-hour curfew, accused Mujibur of permitting corruption to destroy the four-year-old country. Richard C. Hodlett in New York has prepared a report on Bangladesh. Bloody civil war marked the birth of Bangladesh. Late in the fall of 1971, the Indian Army moved across the border into what had been East Pakistan to join the Bengali freedom fighters against the Pakistani army. It was a short war of terrible ferocity with mass murder and rape. The Pakistani garrison was soon overrun. The fall of Dhaka, the capital city, was an easy triumph at the end, wildly welcomed by people who thought that victory and the freedom to run their own lives would open a new era. Sheikh Mujibur Rahman was the spiritual leader of the new state, it's George Washington, and his return from a Pakistani prison cell for the independent celebration seemed to give peace and freedom bright hope and meaning. But the problems of Bangladesh may be insurmountable. It is a country which lives from hand to mouth with no resources but the uncertain land. Outwardly, Sheikh Mujib's popularity seemed unshakable, but his authority was corroded by continued adversity as well as the inefficiency and corruption which he could not eradicate. The guns left over from the Civil War were used by bandits and political thugs. Blood never stopped flowing. Mujib changed the constitution, suspended parliament, and made himself president. He set up his own private army to impose order, but with only indifferent success. The regular army resented this private force and helped to overthrow him. Replacing Mujib is one of his old friends and political associates, Hundakar Mustaq Ahmed, who is regarded as being right of center, pro-Western, and pro-American but it's not clear whether he is the prime mover of this upheaval or the front man. Nor is it clear what the new regime can do about the universal, abysmal, overcrowded poverty that afflicts Bangladesh. Richard C. Hotelet, CBS News. It was a week ago today that young military officers in Bangladesh led a bloody coup against President Mujibur Rahman. The new regime now finds itself confronted with the same monumental problems that had stymied its predecessor. Richard Threlkel went to Bangladesh to take a first-hand look. Dawn in Dhaka a week ago today, troops and tanks on the streets, and while an amateur photographer snapped these photos in Dhaka's downtown, a few blocks away, a truckload of dissident soldiers machine-gunned an entire neighborhood, assassinating the father of Bangladesh, Sheikh Mujib, and almost all his relatives, perhaps 40 people in all, men, women, and children. And this is how Dhaka looks today, the same tanks on the streets, soldiers still on guard. And yet it is almost as if nothing had happened. There was no rioting, almost no reaction to Sheikh Mujib's murder because lately he had lost his hold on the country, led it into a tailspin of economic chaos, despite billions in economic aid, most of it from the United States. A couple of army majors with a personal grudge started it all, but the way things are in Dhaka, it could have been anybody, any time. Bangladesh is the world's basket case. Too many people, not enough food to keep them alive. The army can and probably will change presidents any time it feels like it. The new president, Mushtaq Ahmed, a lackluster administrator who took over almost by default, has promised the people an honest government, but given the handicaps, no government here can deliver anything more than promises. Even when it comes to public relations, the government first invited foreign correspondents into Dhaka to take a look around. But as suddenly as they opened Bangladesh up to the world, the new leaders suddenly closed it tight again confining the newly arrived foreign press corps to our rooms, under guard, in a local hotel. Thereafter, the only view of Dhaka was what you could sneak from a hotel window or driving along the streets. Several dozen foreign journalists remain in Dhaka, unable to file their reports because Sheikh Mujib's successors are nervous about their own future, about their nation's future. How to please the great powers without becoming another Palestine. How simply to survive. 
whatever the government Bangladesh is going to need taking care of, it has demonstrated in four years since independence, it cannot take care of itself. Richard Threlkeld, CBS News, Dhaka.